Hello everybody, welcome to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. If you're new to the channel, I am Johnny D from Mountainary Bicycle and College Park Bicycle, Bike123.com. <laughs> have a preparation material on it and it goes like that. This will self-balance temporarily and the stoker bars will be your kickstand. That's going to be your support. You want that to extend above the seat. I haven't put the seat too low because I don't want to uh, mar the seat post. It only should go as low as you need it. Once again, above the seat, because that's going to be our prop. If you can still keep it balanced, at this point, another good thing to do is install the captain handlebar. Once again, I'm still working vertical. If you've got questions on the balance, you can have an assistant hold it or lean it on something still working vertically. I, I've taken up very little space uh, because often we're on the top deck of a ship and we don't have a lot of room. The Santana threadless headset uses a special collar to keep the adjustment intact. So you don't have to readjust every time. This one has a riser stem on it for extra comfort. That goes on this way. You can either use your own tool or the supplied 5mm wrench for this. A lot of tandems use 4mm fittings. They're kind of small, so we do this. Again, this top cap does not have to be pressured. The adjustment is maintained with the exclusive little collar they use there. I use an eyeball and I line up my handlebar with my front fork tips parallel. Slight amount of pressure. centered. I like to have the lower part of my bar pointing to the back brake, where the back brake used to be, not the, the lower part, or these at a slight rise. And this is absolutely personal. Again, torque wrench or experience, make sure the gap is same top and bottom. 
of this top loading stem tab. If you have one too tight and the other too loose, you'll have limited thread engagement and avoid that and you won't get a strip stem. Now I have my captain bars on, stoker bars on. These are going to be my kickstand. While I'm at it, I may as well, since I have the same tool, install my fret caliper. Okay. Five millimeter recess nut. Preload it onto your tool. Poke it in the back. Remember, this is a fresh assembly right out of the box, first time. After you've done this a while, things will go together much better. center so that the gap in the brake is even both sides. No need for a torque wrench here. Get it tight. There's not a lot of force on this nut once you put the bike. Now, now I have my cables hang down. That's all I'm doing in what I call this method. And I like to lay my screws out right where they belong. These right under there, this one right under here. These are the plastic caps. Because they're so small, they can go in your Tupperware box as you get them off. Okay. The next thing I like to do, it's very obvious which tube goes where. This is a universal top tube. There's no raisons go either way. So the screw is, so take your screw right from where it was, put it there, loose, doesn't have to be too tight. Boob tube or boom tube, whatever you like to call it, right there. Screws go in.
I will uh, put my wheels in now. My rear skewers right here. Lever side is left. LL, always remember, lever side to the left, okay? If these things get sticky, you can put a spot of oil on them. Anything that's slippery will work, okay? What we like to do is get as many large things on as we can. Again, the derailleur being in its relaxed position ensures that the small sprocket fits right in. Guide your rotor into the brake. Again, when you're working in this position, you're not having to have somebody hold it and it gets very awkward.
bottom so you don't have to take the table apart. Split bottom. And if you lose one of these pieces of spaghetti, it's not important. The steel slides over the bedpanning. So again, straight down. This one, they're already fed through correctly. You're going to go the other way. This is the front one, and they only fit where they fit. In other words, this is a brake cable. That's not going to fit in the trailer. Everything's automatic. What some people do is they put a colored dot on each one so they'll match up together. Make sure they're snug all the way. And our rear derailleur. It's fed through. And, and note, in this position, everything is convenient in front of your so make sure the chain is wrapped over correctly. And this one goes through the guide. Again, and the little spaghetti noodle feeds in. This one could probably stay through here. That goes here conveniently. Again, check to make sure they're 180 degrees apart. Hook your chain on before you tighten so you don't squeeze your chain into the stay.
scissors and the trim tape. Today we're using lizard skin tape. This is a 3.2 millimeter. The advantage of this is a lot of shock absorption and grip that you won't believe. One thing we're using is black tape because most tapes we call future black. They will turn black eventually. This is a travel bike. They're going to be going around the world. Notice before I started I put my knees over the tire. This way you have both hands free. When I come around the bottom, I pull a little tighter. I lay it easy over the top. Since you want most of your cushion on top, I stretch the bottom, lay the top over. Stretch the bottom, lay the top over. Today, most people favor holding on in the brake hood area, so I like to give a little more cushion there. Stretch the bottom a little bit more, don't overlap as much. Many people like to use the band that goes around there. I avoid that. It makes too much of a, uh, a bulbous area. And today with the extra large hood covers, you can avoid that by just doing the simple figure eight. Notice as I go, this finger pulls on the release tape. So I don't have to use a separate hand to do that. Again, I'm pulling tighter at the bottom using my release tape, get rid of the excess, over, release. Extra overlap at the corners. And if you do it just right, you will finish right where you need to finish. We don't like to go too close to the stem in case the customer wants to use an accessory. Less, so I can get a little bit more coverage. 1980 something. Now, next part is to cut the tape on a 20 degree taper or thereabouts so that when you wrap, it comes out evenly. Then take your trim tape and apply that to the edge release tape off. Make sure that the seam is going to be at the bottom. So you backtrack a little bit and overlap a little bit too. There we have our seam, bottom and back. And hold that for a few seconds. Put your hood cover back and you'll see that we don't need 
that extra piece of tape to make it thick and get in your way. This leaves a nice clean surface. Some people like their brakes in so that their hands are straighter. Other people like them wider for a more uniform look. And these new bars are designed so that you get a nice continuous area from the part where most people hold on to here. Again, I've overlapped more where the customer will be holding on more and a little bit less down here where they won't hold on as much. Here are those extra pieces of tape that some people like to put there, but we don't do that because it makes too much of a bulge. So again, I push this in and I have my little lizard piece there and in it goes. 3.2 millimeter, super grippy, super cushion. Looks good with any bike. Comes in about 30 different patterns and colors and three different thicknesses, 1.8, 2.5, and 3.2. If you find that your trim tape is coming loose, we suggest a couple of drops of uh, Gorilla Glue or uh, Crazy Glue. There's another product called a, uh, a no-release silicone you can put on. You stretch this, it sticks to itself, and the only way to get that off is with a knife. Alright guys, we have packed up for the day. It's been a long one. Smash that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, get out of here. We don't want you anyway. But seriously, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to give you more quality content here from Mount Airy Bicycle, bike123.com. Appreciate it guys. Have a good one. <laughs>